So we're going to create this table from start to finish. We're going to look at 3D modeling, UV unwrapping, shading, and then exporting into Unreal and the dreaded Unity. So straight off the bat, delete the default cube, shift A, and what I'm going to do is go to mesh and add in a cylinder. From here, I'm going to click on the add cylinder in the bottom left, and I'm going to change the vertices up to about 40. Let's press tab to go into edit mode. S to scale, Z, so we scale along the Z axis. There we go. From here, I'm just going to press G, Z to move it up. Let's scale it along the Z axis again with S, Z. And now we've kind of got this disk. However, because our primary user case is to get this into a game engine, we're going to clean up this top face. Technically, we can leave it because when we go ahead and export it, it'll auto triangulate. But what I'm going to do is press three to go into face view. I'm going to select the bottom face. I'm going to press E to extrude along the Z axis and bring it down a little bit and then scale it in. And so you can see that we've kind of got this lip and it's just a nice decor is the word I think. Let's press the top one, GZ. I'm just gonna move that down a little bit just to make that table a little bit thinner. From here, what I can do is I can press the delete key and I just wanna delete the face. There we go. Now with number two, I can go edge select or we can come up here into the top left. Holding alt left click, I can select the edge. I can now press control F to grid fill. And now we've kind of got this shape. However, we've got too many vertices here. So I wanna clean up all these vertices. I don't want there to be so many. So I'm gonna go into the bottom left and change the span and bring it down to probably one. And now we've got rectangle faces. When we export it, it'll triangulate. However, we've controlled what triangles will look like. We will do the same for this bottom edge. So let's select this face, delete face. Alt left click on the edge, control F so we can do grid fill and we'll bring that back down to one as well. Now let's go ahead and look at creating our legs. Shift A, let's go into mesh and we're gonna add in a cylinder. I don't need so many vertices. So I'm actually gonna bring this back down to about 12. And now let's go tab into edit mode. I'm gonna press scale to bring that down. And I think that looks about right. I can now press numpad three and that'll go into side view. Let's press Z and go into wireframe mode. And what I want to do is delete these faces. So let's go C and I can just select those faces, delete faces. And I'm going to delete the top and the bottom face. Out you go, buddy. We can now select these two edges here and press F to create a face. We can now press A to select all, scale, Z. I think that looks not too bad. From here, let's Alt left click this edge. And now if I press E, you can see that it's gonna move everywhere. Now the reason for that is, is because it's not a face. If I were to press F and go E to extrude, I can only move it up and down. So let's go Control Z. I can now go E, Z and bring that down. From here, I can press F. So depending on whatever order you want to do, I'm going to press Control B to do a bevel. And let's kind of just round off the edge. Looking good. With this selected, I'm going to go back into edit mode, press A to select all. And let's just kind of line up how we think the leg should look like, maybe like so. I think that looks not too bad. From here, I'm going to press numpad seven to go into top view. Let's press Z wireframe again. I'm gonna press A to go into edit mode. And I want it to rotate around the center point here. So this is where the 3D cursor is. So the way to do that is I will come up to the top here and change the transformation pivot point from the medium point of the mesh to the 3D cursor. So now I can go Shift D to duplicate and right click to put it back in place. R to rotate and I want three legs, so I'm gonna go 120 degrees, enter, shift D, right click, put that back in place, R to rotate 120 degrees, there we go. And so now we've got the basis of our table. However, you can see that it is still very sharp. So I'm going to now shift left click on the table as well, 
I'm just going to go Control J to join the mesh. Let's now press Spacebar to search. Now let's press Spacebar to search. If this doesn't come up for you, you can always press F3 to search. And I'm just going to type in Shade Smooth. And now you can see that we've got this smoothed out mesh. Let's now have a look at creating a material. Now, because I kind of want this wooden texture, I've jumped over to Ambient CG. There is a link in the description for this. This is all for free. And I've downloaded the 1K PNG. Let's now come over into shading. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new material and we'll call this M underscore table. So material underscore table. With the node wrangler enabled, if you don't have that, edit preferences node and turn on node wrangler. I'm going to select my principal shader. I'm going to now press control shift T, go to the location of my wood texture. And I'm going to add in the color, the normal, which will be GL and the roughness. And then we're going to select principal texture setup. And you can see that everything has been auto plugged in. Now this looks like rubbish, but let's fix that up. We're going to click the UV editing tab up the top. And for starters, I'm going to start off with the top section. I'm going to press control L to select everything that's linked. Let's go numpad seven. So we go into top view. From here, I'm going to press U, project from view with bounds. So now you can see the shape of our table. And if we come over into material mode, you can see that our table has been set up. Now I'm not too concerned about this stretching. That's why we made that area really thin. But if we are super concerned about it, we could even come in and bring it down a smidgen. And for this material, it's hardly noticeable. Now for the legs, they look pretty good as it is, but we will do these as well. I'm gonna shift left click on these legs, press control L to select everything that's linked. Let's now go U and I'm just gonna go cubic projection and let's have a look how that looks. I am not too thrilled on how that looks. So what we might do is actually UV unwrap these properly. Let's select our edge, select our edge and we'll do the same on these ones. From here, I'm gonna press Control E and mark scene. Let's now press Control L, U, uh, UV unwrap. And that is looking really good. I really like how those legs have turned out now. You can't really see the seam on the corner here. That's why we picked those edges. And there we have it. We've got a very simple table. From here, let's quickly set up a scene. And there we have it, a beautiful looking table. Let's now go ahead and export this. Select our table, file, export, FBX. I'm going to name this SM for static mesh, underscore table. We are gonna go into path mode. I'm gonna select copy, and I'm gonna press this little button. From here, let's go into selected objects because I only wanna export the table, and we're gonna click export FBX. So as always, Unity sucks. So I'm gonna select our FBX, our color, our GL and our normal, sorry, normal GL and roughness. Click and drag and dump that into our asset. Let's click and drag that in. And now we have a textured table in Unity. Unreal Engine is a lot better. With Unreal Engine, I just gotta select my FBX, dump it in there. Uh, since I'm using UE5, let's build Nanite, why not? Import all. Blah, blah, blah. Click and drag that table in. And now we have a gorgeous table in our scene. 